Hi, y'all. Come sit around the kitchen table and let's chat about metaphysics. I am so excited for my guest today. It has been such a long time since I've got to speak to this person. I see them around, but they are a local LA foodie and just overall badass polymath. I am talking to Jeff Miller today, the founding editor of Thrillist LA and the front man for the acclaimed indie rock tribute band, Black Crystal Wolf Kids. I am beyond excited for you all to hear this interview. We had so much fun talking about our upcoming travels that we're going to be on, which is Jam Cruise. And we also talked about how fun, how much fun we've had just talking about things in the past. So without further ado, I am so excited for you all to hear this incredible episode with me and Jeff Miller. So jump on in and enjoy the show. Okay, so I hear that we're getting to see you tonight as well. Yes, yeah, I'm very excited. I'm glad you guys are coming out. Uh, <laughs> it should be a really good one. Um, I love Pink Talking Fish so much, and yes. um, the fact that they, you know, I know you guys were at the last time we played with them, but the fact that they asked us back was really um, special. Uh, it felt really good. Yeah, it felt yeah. really vindicating, and um, you know, I've been friendly with Eric uh, for, I don't know, 20 years at this point. And um, I remember pitching him Black Crystal Wolf Kids when I first heard about Pink Talking Fish. And he sort of gave me that like, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you have like a fun band, but like we're a serious project, <laughs> you know, that kind of vibe. And so, I mean, I love the guy, but I, and I understand why why that would be the case. Right. So um, when we did the telegram with them, um, you know, Brandon really pushed for it. And then uh, it happened. And, you know, sort of watching Eric understand what we were doing in mm -hmm. real time and then coming out and singing with us and, um, you know, hanging out with them and then uh, them asking us to do these was really special for me. It was so much fun. We were just at the Terragram last night and to see Lotus and it was a really good show. Uh, and I, uh, we were just I talking thought about, about that. coming through to that. <laughs> I, um, I had a jam in uh like north hollywood that ended at like 9 30 last night and oh. there was this moment where i was like i'm sure i could still get into the show you know they'll probably play till midnight yeah and they did two sets yeah i was so fucking hungry and <laughs> like exhausted and, yes. and i was like you know i'm gonna see like they're not even a band whose material i know it would have right. been like hanging out with people and stuff yeah and and i was like you know i'm gonna see them on jam cruise in like three weeks yeah, in three weeks uh, yeah <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go home uh, I'm going to take an edible <laughs> and I'm going to eat some chicken and I'm going to watch maybe one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life, which is what oh. happened last night. Oh my God. What movie was it? It's the new, I, I want to say it's called Rise, but it's, that's not correct, but it's the new Kevin Hart action comedy, oh God. whatever on Netflix, oh God. but it's like <laughs> neither funny nor full of action. Um, and the script is, is terrible. Satire? It's not supposed no, to, it's supposed no. to be funny. <laughs> It's supposed to be funny <laughs> and it's supposed to like feel like an Ocean's Eleven meets okay. like Mission Impossible. Okay. But like, it's like, it's like if you told like an eighth grader the plot of both of those movies and then like hired Mick G to direct it, <laughs> but like didn't have a script supervisor, like that's what the movie was like. Oh my God. Oh my God. Speaking of eating, I remember when I first met you on Jam Cruise, I don't remember where we were porting or where we were at port or whatever, how it said, but I remember specifically that you were seeking out some kind of like hot sauce. Am I remembering this right? I, I believe you're correct. I'm trying to remember where we got off the boat, but I had forgotten about this until you mentioned it in the email that I had like a place that I had to go to. Yeah. I don't remember where it was. We got in a cab and I went with Sean and Gina. And I don't know if you guys came with too and got like hot sauce and some, some meal that was great. Yeah. Um, I remember you telling us about that. And I like, it immediately made me be like, wait a minute next time. That's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to make sure that like, I check out all these places of where we're going. And when we, wherever we went last year, I made us get off the boat. I made us go eat somewhere. I made us go to these like kitschy little like Instagram spots that were in the port. And everybody was like, I'm really glad I got off the boat and ate. And I'm pretty sure that 
the power went out in the restaurant that we were in oh, man. <laughs> about an hour and a half into the meal, which <laughs> was a pretty, you know, long meal, but it wasn't long because uh, it was just long because it was just like, you know, island life you know yeah um yeah. but that it kept reminding me of that and i know now we're going to like montego bay and grand cayman so do you know of any places around there that you want to tap into that are food places that you're like okay if we're going to jamaica i've got to get this so i've been to jamaica before i went i don't know 15 years ago a little less than that maybe 10 years ago with my family and um there's a place called scotchies that's a chain of jerk chicken restaurants oh, that's my like God. And like, I'm obsessed with like great grilled and rotisserie chicken. It's like, Same. it's like a thing like my, my friends make fun of me for like my food <gasps> friends are like, you're like a food guy and like chicken is your thing. And I'm like, fuck yeah, because yep. a great chicken is better yep. than anything else. Rotisserie, yeah. you rotisserie yeah. me and it's over. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm like, I'm so on board with that. So um, my memory of this place, Scotchies, is that it's incredible. Um, so I would love to go to a Scotchies uh, in Jamaica. And then uh, I have ever been to Grand Cayman, um, but I would imagine that like conch, which I don't know if it's pronounced conch or conch, but like I that, that um, shellfish <laughs> yeah, uh, is probably like, you know, to, to me that that's what that area of the world is known for. Um, I've had it before and it's actually sort of tasteless. It's, um, it's like oh. a clam that doesn't have any flavor, but it's big. Um, but they make like ceviches and stuff with it. And, uh, mm. you know, I'd be open, open to trying that again. Um, it's funny because I, in the years since that jam cruise have taken up golf and I've been really thinking <gasps> about going golfing in Jamaica. Um, oh my God. and if I do that, it's going to take up the entire day. And right. As you know, on jam cruise, <laughs> who knows how much fucking sleep I'm getting the night before. Right. And so like committing to anything feels a little crazy to me right now. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a golfer. We have friends that golf, but I'm someone who just like loves beautiful scenic places. And I'm like, mm -hmm. why are golf courses always so gorgeous? Like I see why people travel all over the world to golf in these beautiful places because other sports it's you're in an arena or, you know, you're at a ping pong table. <laughs> yeah. Or you're like on a tennis course. Like, yeah. A tennis court. Like, yeah. Golf courses are, I mean, you know, there's a lot of discussion about the ethics of golf courses. I mean, I totally. Oh, I'm sure. That. Yeah, we we know uh, that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, you do get to see sort of uh, a lot of times like they're carved out of the wildlife or mm -hmm. the, the jungle area or whatever where you are. So you actually do get to see like the way that it looks when there's not a golf course there. The sides right. of it are either a forest or a jungle or a desert or whatever. Um, and I think that's really cool. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's become one of my favorite things to do. So, um, I'm trying to decide, you know, it might be a last minute decision whether to do that or not. Right. I mean, I bet, I bet if you said something in the Facebook group, there would definitely be like three, there would probably be a few people who would be like, we can do this. <laughs> well, that's what inspired me. There's a guy who posted on there that he was going to go to this course called white witch. And when Ooh. I was in Jamaica, I played White Witch, but it was before I knew anything about golfing. Oh and my so, god! So I like I like barely remember it. I mean, I like I was just like fucking around. Yeah. Um, so going back and actually like playing it for real would be really fun to do. Oh my gosh! So when did you pick up golf golfing during? Was it during the pandemic? During the pandemic. So I had actually sort of grown up in a golf family. My uh, my grandma was hardcore hardcore golfer. Oh my she god, was, that's so uh, cool. Member of <laughs> member of a country club in LA where she was the club champion multiple years. And then my uncle, her son was like a hardcore golfer too. And so everything. So it's in your blood. It's that, well, it's in that gam gam, that mamma like blood. <laughs> <laughs> but I fought it. I fought it hard. I would go out with them at Thanksgiving <laughs> and I would be like, this is the most boring thing in the world. I can't believe anybody likes doing this. Why are we so doing dumb. This? Yeah. And my, my grandma, while she was alive, she would say, you know, anytime you want to take golf lessons, I will pay for golf lessons. And I was like, I'm never going to want to do that. <laughs> You're like, thanks and, grandma. But no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and eventually, you know, she, her, her hips, you know, got bad and she got a little too old to play and she would just follow us around the course. And this is probably, I don't know, about 10 years ago, I started getting invited on these press trips with thrillists that occasionally would have golf as part of the trip. So cool. I would like do it like just to, to fuck around, but I had no idea what I was doing. Right. And, um, and then during the pandemic, I ended up uh, in Kauai. My brother lives there 
Mm -hmm. And there is not a lot to do in Kauai. Yeah. So I, um, I thought I was just gonna be there a few weeks and I ended up staying much longer and I bought a pass for, I decided that I was going to golf at every golf course on the Island one time. Oh my God. That was going to be it. There's like nine courses. We're not talking about it. You know, small that's island. still a pretty big, like, that's a good <laughs> achievement. That's a good goal to like set and get. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the last course I bought this like package cause it was cheaper to do that than to just like buy around. And on the last day of the package, the third day I golfed, it was the day of the last presidential election, 2020. Oh and it was, God. <laughs> or it was, the, that was actually maybe the day after two days after. Um, and it was pouring rain. And I ended up with this group of people that were for lack of a better way of saying this, it was two old white men and an Asian woman. <laughs> and I was so excited that Joe Biden had won. I mean, I just like was beside myself. Right. Um, and my girlfriend had been working on the campaign. I was so proud of her. There's all of these things, Aww. but I couldn't share my enthusiasm because it was in that moment in time that was so contentious. Oh. And um, and at some point I was talking to the woman and she was like, you know, how did you end up here? And I told her and I was like, yeah, actually today's like a big day. My girlfriend's been working on the, the Biden campaign and, you know, I'm very excited. I don't know how you guys feel. And she <laughs> grabs the other guys and she's like, oh my God, we can celebrate. He's excited oh too, Biden yes. won. And we all like started hugging each other on the golf course. Aww. It was like this incredible moment. And then um, at the end of that round, you know, I played terribly. I really had no idea what I was doing. Right. And they they had just been so nice and had really like taken me, you know, sort of like as the, as a, they adopted me on the course. Oh, and this I love guy it. who's like in his late seventies, he was like, listen, I golf with my friends every week on Monday. Do you want to be a part of our like golf crew? And oh, I was wow. like, I was like, I'm terrible. He's like, we don't care. It doesn't matter. We, like, yeah, you know, we're just here for fun. Yeah. Um, and so I started golfing with them. And one of the guys in his golf crew was like an amateur, like very early, early on in, in his sort of, you know, uh, process guitarist. And he was like, would you be open to trading guitar lessons for golf lessons? <gasps> I was like, a hundred percent. Like, what? Hell you Yeah. Doing? So I took some golf lessons with him and he took some guitar lessons from me and, you know, sort of that turned my game around. And then after that, um, I'm not good, but I can like keep up with anybody. And like mm -hmm. the most amazing thing about golf and like, it's really changed my opinion on it. I've never been like a sports guy at all. Mm -hmm. And the thing about golf is that it's a competitive sport where you can play against or with anybody because you get handicapped, which basically means that you're only playing against your best game. So like you could put me with Tiger Woods and with the handicap and mm -hmm. we literally could be competitive against each other. Right. And it also means you're not like one of my things, like when I was growing up was I was always like the heavy kid and like guy who was not good at sports and whatever. And I was holding my team up and I like really internalized a lot of that stuff. Yeah. And in golf, you're not holding anybody up. As long as you pick up the ball after a certain amount of strokes, you're really only challenging yourself to do better than you've done before. And it, like, once I realized that it was like a fully different type of game, dude, and it's, it's become you, like, like a big, healed like, your inner child by playing yeah. golf. That's beautiful. Like, that's <laughs> so fucking cool. That's so cool. Oh man. That's awesome. I, I, I mean, I don't even, I, I can't swing a club. I could probably throw a football better than I could swing a club, but <laughs> this makes me want to play golf. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like, a, it's like, you know, I feel like it does have that sort of old white man. Like I've, I've like jokingly said, like I've leaned into my middle age by becoming a golfer, <laughs> but, um, you know, so fucking what I love it. It's, it's like, yeah. it's like so centering. And when you're like, ha I mean, when you're having a bad day, it comes out in golf. And when you're having a right. good day, it comes out, you know, I mean, there are, there are days where I've been so stressed and thought that going and playing golf would chill me out. And instead it's the opposite. I play the worst game ever. You wow. know, it's like such a head sport. Wow. I mean, yeah, that really, that really shows that like, you know, your energy can really affect anything. If you're really Absolutely. stressed and you're like putting that out there and you're like, okay, I think I'm going to try to do this to make me not stressed. And then you're like, oh my God, that was the worst game of my life. Um, <laughs> ever. Um, so touching back on these guitar lessons. So, um, I mean, Brandon's known you for like, I feel like uh, uh, over a decade, like how long have you and Brandon known each other? I I honestly don't even remember when I met him. Um, I oh my God. It's, it's gotta be, a tw it's gotta be 20 years. It has to oh be. Oh my God. That's so cool. I that's mean, amazing. I'm, I'm 44 
Um, yeah, he's and, just he just turned 42 or will yeah. turn 42 this year. And he and I have been involved in this like jam band scene in LA forever. I mean, I feel like he started super good. That must have been how yeah. I met him. Yeah. But I like maybe he was doing stuff. I mean, I'm I'm thinking back and like memories with him, like at the mint. I don't know, yeah. 15 years ago backstage with Jesus from Lettuce. Like it's That's like so I've known each other a long time. Funny. You just yeah, yeah, when we were at the Telegram last night, I asked him, I was like, because the Telegram is Margaret backwards. And I was like, how convenient. I was like, how cute. Like you were getting married and this is like your home, you know, your venue. And I kind of asked, I was like, how in the world did you? you know, come up on this place and meet Scott. Um, and he told me a story about 10 years ago when they, uh, you know, he basically got Jesus and tycoon together and a couple other people and did like an after Grammy jam. And it was the biggest bar night that the telegram had that year. And that just like kind of solidified him. And I was like, but how did you like get to do that? And he was like, oh, I just sent Scott an email and was like, hey, I like <laughs> the Mint used to play, you know, the Mint used to have all these bands come and now they don't anymore. And you are having these bands come, you know, more of the jammier bands. And he was like, and I like that. So I was like, I want to take your talent buyer out to lunch and the rest is history. So I was like, that's amazing. And every show that I've ever seen there, including you, like it's just been so much fun. It's just always such a really good time. When did you like, when did you first pick up a guitar? Is that something that's kind of been with you since you were little or once you got older? I, I was always a music fan and um, I started getting interested in guitar Surprise, surprise, as a man in his 40s, when I heard Nirvana's Nevermind, it's shocking, I know. No, um, <laughs> no, that's so good, though. That There's that, like, my <laughs> the water in my body remembers like every lyric and note to that song. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I like heard Smells Like Teen Spirit, changed my life. I had been like a Michael Jackson and New Kids on the Block fan before then. It's still a Michael Jackson fan yeah. for the music. Obviously, we don't need Obviously, yeah, song. right, right, right. Anyway, <laughs> um, but like, you know, like I was, I was like a pop guy and then all of a sudden heard Smells Like Teen Spirit and like my body changed because I was 13 yeah. or yeah. 12 or whatever. Yeah. Um, and um, and for my bar mitzvah, I got a camera from my aunt because I was taking photography classes that I like didn't give a shit about. Yeah. And I returned to the camera and with that money, I bought my first electric oh, um, and I will never forget going to Guitar Center with my mom and my mom asking if it was appropriate for a 13-year-old to have an electric guitar to this oh guy who's trying to sell us this, uh, you know, Squire guitar package. Um, and this guy, guy at Guitar Center who would have said yes to anything. Oh, my um, God. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I started taking lessons. Um at my high school, actually, I offered lessons. Um, oh, that's this cool. Guy, Dust, Dustin Boyer, who I'm still in touch with, an amazing L.A. musician, was my guitar teacher. And my goal was to learn every song on Nevermind, and then I was going to stop playing guitar. I was like, I just want to know how to play this, these Nirvana songs yeah. and Nirvana my whole life. Um, oh my and God. obviously, uh, that was not what happened. I learned Nevermind, and then I learned five zillion other songs, and <laughs> her died. And the first time I ever played live was playing Nirvana songs at, at my high school wow. uh, the day after he died, sobbing in front of my entire high school. Whoa, I mean, chills. Like, like <sighs> really big, big, you know. Whoa, I just got like full body chills. That's crazy. Um, wow. Yeah, that was that was like my my high school persona was like the Nirvana guy. Like for Oh my sure. god, that's so cool. That was like definitely my <laughs> middle school persona. Me and my best friend Stephanie. We were like the weird girls that loved Nirvana and like were drawing heart-shaped boxes on shit. Like it was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> And she's still like my very best friend to this day because yeah. of the music that we connected over. Um, yeah. So when did Black Crystal Wolf Kids form? So Black Crystal Wolf Kids started almost 15 years ago. So I was in a band called City Museum um, after college. In college, I was a band called Bottom of Salad. I was in a band called Burt in high school. I mean, I played in bands with the exception of about two years of my life. I've been in a band forever. Oh, my God. Um, I love that. <laughs> And those two years, like I look back and I'm like, I don't know why I wasn't doing that then too. Um, <laughs> I was like dating this girl who like wasn't as into music as me. And and she was never like, you should give up guitar. I just stopped playing with people. And like, I was like ridiculous in 24. Like, I don't know why. Right, right. Um, but uh, so I, um, so yeah, I've been in bands my whole life, like literally since I was 12 years old. 
And I had the idea for Black Crystal Wolf Kids like many, many, many years ago, like long before it started. Um, I was just really into indie rock and going to see yeah. all these bands in LA. And those bands then started getting bigger and bigger. And I was like, man, there's so much attitude around this scene in LA. And so many people that are like not having fun watching these right. bands that are so fun. And like, what the fuck is that about? Like, I want to start a really fun indie rock band, indie rock tribute band. Like, I yeah. thought it was such a funny concept because the genre took itself so seriously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yeah. so I think we started in 2009. 2009 sounds right to me. Maybe it was 2010, um, but right around then. And uh, and our first show was at City Stock, which is the little festival that I throw in my my. Uh, dad's backyard every year yeah um and city museum had broken up our um bass player was my sort of musical partner and my roommate he moved to north carolina and got married and it sort of gave me an opening to start this project that had been on my mind for for a while at that mm -hmm. point so um yeah and it's like you know it's really changed i mean what we do musically has changed and the, the band uh members have mostly stayed the same actually the the four core members of the band have been in the band since day one which is incredible Oh my God, um, that that's a feat in itself. Yeah. After 14, I, 15 years, that's incredible. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there are no bands. I mean, very few that last that long with the same same members. So I feel really lucky. You know, they're all great friends of mine. And um, it's been it's been definitely the musical project that has meant the most to me and has been the most fulfilling. Um, even though we're not playing originals, you know, I get to do so much fun stuff with it. Um, we've gotten to do so many fun gigs and it's really like expanded my musical horizons in a lot of other ways. I, I started a, another band when I was living in Kauai that I, that's still active called Extended Stay. That's I remember like you telling band. me about this. Yes. And, and I feel yeah. like, I just feel so lucky to be able to have like both of these projects concurrently that like totally stretch different muscles. That's incredible. And like what it does for your brain, because we know that music heals the brain and it helps you like what fires together, wires together type of type of shit. So like the more music you make, the more your brain becomes musically inclined. So like you probably have like literal, literal, little guitars in your brain <laughs> that are just like <laughs> chords that are just like muscle memory that are stuck there. That's like super, super cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I've realized that one of the things that I feel very lucky has become like a part of me is that I know like a zillion songs front to back. And That's so I so can be cool. in a lot of different sort of situations. And somebody be like, oh, you know, like, does anybody know how to play blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I, I, I got it. Let's do it. You know? <laughs> yes. Well, do you guys have any like special tricks up your sleeve tonight that you can tell me? This will air after the concert yeah obviously. oh man i have i have a great a great story that is one of our special tricks up our sleeves i filled in for a band called geezer uh about two and a half years ago and they were opening for berlin at the canyon club and they're like a weezer and um beastie boys sort of a uh, parody tribute band okay. they, they all dress like old men and change the lyrics to be about getting old and then play weezer and beastie boy songs uh, sort of like a uh, weird owl uh, yeah. type of thing. Yeah. And they asked me to fill in for their bass player, Zach, who's too I'm friendly with. And I played with the band before um, and they'd like done shows with them where, where they'd open for us and stuff. So I was pretty familiar with their catalog. And I got to the show and I was like, where's Zach? Like, why isn't he playing? And their singer, Adam, was like, you're not going to believe this. And at the time it was top secret. He's like, you know, you can't tell anybody there's an NDA. And he's like, Zach sent an email or sent a, sent a, um, a tweet to Smash Mouth when Smash Mouth fired their singer that was like, hey, I'm like a big dude with a gruff voice. Are you guys doing auditions? Oh and they my were God. like, yeah, send us, like he was joking. And they were oh like, my yeah, God. Send, send us a reel. And basically long story short, the gig that I was filling in for was when he was rehearsing to be <sighs> Smash Mouth's singer. What? So since then he has become the singer for Smash Mouth and revitalized Smash Mouth who, um, their singer was, I, I'm sure you saw videos. He was, yeah. he was not somebody who was reliable. Uh, sadly, right. he passed away. Their, their original singer passed away. Yeah. But Zach joining the band has revitalized them because they're now can play, wow. you know, these shows with 20,000 people and he shows up and does a great job. Oh my God. And so Zach is, is also a friend and uh, he lives out there. So, so I keep saying the singer for a multi-platinum 
90s iconic yeah. 90s band is going to sit in with us tonight um and it's going to be zach from smash mouth and um one That's of so the cool. stipulations of his contract is that he can't sing smash mouth songs with <gasps> anybody other than smash mouth okay so yeah we've played it we've played a couple shows where he's gotten up and sung with us but it's always like he and i texting back and forth like what songs should you sing yeah because he can't do smash mouth songs so oh! we're gonna do um two songs with him tonight that we've never played with him Super fun. Oh my God. I'm so excited. I am literally so excited. I like screenshot it. And uh-huh. uh, the other day when you posted it on Facebook, I screenshot it and I was like doing something and I was like, okay, I'll tell Brandon about this in a minute. And then we both came up to each other and we were like, Jeff Black Crystal Wolf kids, blah, blah, blah. like we're doing each other the same thing at the same time. And I was like, yeah, I took a screenshot. Like he was like, we're going, we're definitely going. And uh, I was like, this is just so perfect. It's going to be so much fun. I really can't wait. It's like, it's a good Friday and that it's not good Friday. It's not like, right. It's but it's, it's, like, whatever, it's, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good day. Exactly. So I know this past year we, uh, there was something that conflicted. I think we may have been out of town during city stock, this pat this, this last city stock and what number city stock was that 15 or something. So this is city stock 16, or if you're really getting into the weed 16.5 because <laughs> we did a mini city stock during COVID that was a uh, much smaller invite only two bands. I do uh, remember thing. that we were there for that. Yeah. That was fun. Um, that was so a yeah, really so good 6. one 5. too. 16.5. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And when does, uh, when does city stock typically, do you usually do it around a certain time of the year? Yeah, it used to be Labor Day, and now it's usually the weekend after Labor Day, but it's gone all the way into October. It's either September or October. Um, it's a one-day like festival, pool party, end of summer uh, music blowout. Right, and did it, so. was it the mayor? Like, what's the what's the connection with the city of L.A.? I remember yeah, vaguely. The, that was like the most amazing thing. Um, yeah. The city of L.A. and the mayor, Mayor Garcetti, basically like issued a, a, a I don't know what you call it, a certificate, a award saying that it was one of the cultural events that makes LA great (gasps) and um man it was a very unexpected moment in time when that happened and like I still can't believe that it happened it was unbelievable wow that's so cool I mean that's really cool I remember before I lived in California before I like you know even had the inclination there was always like I'm gonna do that I'm gonna go there I want to be there there's always cool shit happening in LA and that's just like really cool to get recognized by the city for doing something like you know in your dad's backyard that you intentionally made and it's just like talk about recognition and getting you know that like confirmation that you know yep you're you're on the right path <laughs> yeah yeah and like oh, man I was very vindicating it's pretty incredible that's amazing so this upcoming city stock is going to be 16.5 no this is going to be 17.5 17. Yeah, 17. which is like great I mean like I am <laughs> literally a different person you know in so many in every possible way oh my um, god yeah. yeah yeah maybe you should go back and see if you have the like do you keep the set lists from that first one and play I, them I have this running google doc that's like the things that happen at each city stock it's just like the basics it's like the lineup Dude. the yeah. sponsors um my old band city museum which is what it was named after used to play a surprise song every year so what the surprise song was what the theme of the black crystal wolf kid set was um so i have that that sort of running document and then i have flyers from every single year oh um, that's cool yeah oh talk about a cool scrapbook yeah and there's a couple videos they're like buried online from the first one and it's like amazing how different it is i mean it was like you know 50 of my friends right uh, and it was you know city museum was the band um we uh it was all just friends of ours but then like when you look back at that stuff and see what has happened with some of those friends bands like um the band that headlined the first year is called oliver future and basically the concept came about because uh city museum was releasing an ep and i was with some friends we were drinking at a, at a gomez concert in san diego including mm-hmm. some band members and we were like, what if we, how, why, how do we want to do a release party? We we're like, what if we do a party in the backyard so it has like less sort of pressure than an LA club show? And what if we got a band bigger than us to headline? That was always the idea. Right, right. Um, so the band that headlined the first year was called the Oliver Future. And at that point in time, they were like sort of like a buzz band. They were being played on KCRW and stuff, but they're friends of ours. Cool. And, you know, they were like headlining the mid-size band and we were like opening for them at the mid-size band. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, the members of that band went on to be uh, Ben Harper's backing band. Two of them have won Grammys for songwriting. Um, they played with Ringo Starr. I mean, they, one oh, of them has cool. become like one of the most seeked out session drummers in the world. And so like they're, it's like incredible to think back on who they were wow. then and who they've become now. Um, and, uh, and Noah, their band City leader, Stock. it all started at City Stock. <laughs> their band leader, Noah, uh, is still a really close friend of mine, has this incredible studio in, uh, in Austin and an incredible sausage place in Austin. I go see him all the time when I'm there. Um, so oh it's just gosh. like, you know, you think about like, again, like how life has changed. I mean, we were, we were in our early twenties, you know? Yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah. And even just how much the world has changed since then, it's just crazy yeah. to think like 15, 16 years ago, how different things were. Um, yeah. that's so cool. Well, I'm super excited to see you tonight and to dance and to sing along. And I'm really excited to see you that you're on the boat this year. Are you going to be doing press or anything for, for Jam Cruise? No, I am going. Oh, as a hell, yeah. Uh, hell yeah. I, I am. I mean, the years that I've gone on Jam Cruise, I haven't gone for like four years. Yeah, I, I know. Spent, <laughs> yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> Um, you were on my first and now you're on my fourth where I'll get my nice. rope. <laughs> yeah, this is my fourth as well. So I guess we've been on the same ones together. Yay! Um, I, uh, I always hang out at the spot and there was always this guy, yes. Nathan Moore, who led it, uh, who I became friendly with over the years. And now I know Nathan's not on the boat anymore. And so there's like this, like a uh, tinge of unexpected. What is it going to be? Because like, I literally was spending midnight till 8am there yeah. every single night. Yeah. Um, and uh, I've heard the vibe is a little different. Um, I know the people that are running at the Sweet Lilies are really nice as well. And I hope to sort of get in with them the same way I got in with, with, uh, with, um, what's the name who I just, just name checked. No, I can't think of. Um, Noah. That's what I was going to say, but it's his name is not Noah. <laughs> um regardless I'm hoping to yeah just play, I'm hoping to just play music a lot I think I'm gonna yeah. do master's camp and and do that too and then I'm really excited for the uh Adrian Ballou yes. uh Jerry Harrison set because yes. I've been trying to like see that that show since they announced it and I haven't gotten to see it yet so that's oh my gosh. I'm most excited about yeah same I think I'm most excited about Frank Moody mm, I don't know Frank Moody at all Oh my God, you should definitely, I'm surprised that this, you know, that podcast you told me to listen to, like the music podcast, what's it called? The 60 songs that explain the nineties. Yes. Yes. That one. Yeah. Um, they seem like they would be featured on that podcast. They're just like this French house band who got super big and just like Brandon loves them like hardcore loves them uh mm -hmm. so just because of that I would say you would probably like them <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> um but yeah Frank with a C uh Frank Moody they're probably one of the ones that I'm most excited about to to see on the boat and I have a really good friend named Ian who uh was uh he he's been playing guitar his whole life he was really really good and then he got hit by a car he got like hit by a car on his bicycle in Denver and it fucked up his wrist um and the doctor was like you're not going to be able to like ever play guitar again and within six weeks he was playing again uh wow. like incredibly like sent me videos and I was like what's what's going on with your arm and he was like oh yeah you didn't know I basically like there's metal plates and all this shit in here and they told me I couldn't play but I'm playing and he's one of the other people who was like uh you know I'm not really in with the people who go around and do music on the boat but I really just want to like find people that want to just pop up and play and I was like oh man this was like months ago I was like oh man I wish our friend Jeff was coming so I'm definitely gonna reach out to him today and be like guess what <laughs> that's awesome yeah I can't wait to play with them my like dream is that at some point I get to play the jam room with like those guys oh, you know, yes. and uh and I have some connections to some of the people who are running the jam room stuff this year. I yes. feel like it's like that, that boat is so interesting because it's like, there is a real democracy. Like the musicians are just out and people are hanging out, right. with each other. but there's also that same hierarchy that exists everywhere. Everywhere else. else. Where, yeah. Um, and you, you know, uh, my friend Chris Scamato, he's a saxophone player and I met him just jamming with him on the boat. And now he's like an invited like guest and he sits in with everybody so oh, that's that you so can cool. make that transition yeah totally I feel like if there's anywhere that you can do it that easily like that it just pops up like that it's it's it's, it's jam cruise yeah, yeah absolutely it's yeah. so good 
Well, yeah. thank you so much for your time. I can't wait to see you in like, you know, eight hours, I guess. Yeah. Thanks so much for having <laughs> me. I'll see you tonight. Absolutely. I hope you have a great day and just thank you Thanks. so much. You're the best. You're the best. Take it easy. See you. <laughs> Don't you love it? I did. I had such a great time chatting with Jeff. He is one of my absolute favorite people in the world. And it was such a good time to sit and chat with him. There were some definite funny moments. Please let me know what your favorite moment was. And if you are someone who wants to get on Jam Cruise or you're excited about Jam Cruise or you want to see live music, make sure you check out Black Crystal Wolf Kids. They tour all around SoCal and just... It is the funnest show that I've been to. I recorded this the night that we went to this show, um, and it was just so much fun. It is the most fun that I've had at a show in a while, and you better believe I was yelling for him to play Nirvana. <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening, and I hope you have a great rest of your day, and as always, stay metaphysical as fuck. <laughs>